Got it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, welcome everyone. Happy May the 4th. May the force be with you. New <laughs> Zoom. Yes. Um, I'm Betsy Co. And um, in the red with the Star Wars hat is um, Steve Greenwood, who co-hosts with me on the Thursdays. Um, and we're so glad everyone's here, both um, live and if you're watching afterwards via the recording. Um, this, these sessions are all about um, just talking about our questions on Wikitree and um, how we can get more involved and do more with our profiles and grow our branches and, and um, share, share tips and, and um, you know, nerd out on Wikitree. So um, what we like to do is start with a, a model profile that just, you know, is a good example of um, a complete profile that's, that's well done. And um, Stephen is going to take that this part. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to you. All right. So yeah, obviously today is May the 4th. It is a nerd holiday for a lot of us. I understand not everyone celebrates it, but I felt like it would be appropriate to have a article of a person who's very well developed on Wikitree. And they're more than just Star Wars, obviously. Uh, I'm talking about Christopher Frank Carandini Lee, C-B-E-C-S-T-J. Uh, those are his... Uh, extra things added to the back of his name here but basically chris lee and we're talking about christopher lee the actor uh an author musician um let me go ahead and get my screen shared here so that i can show you what i'm looking at host disabled participant screen sharing oh okay. i'm i'm sorry that's that, <laughs> i will make you a call i'm going to need permissions I, please. I knew i forgot something and look there's jennifer <laughs> yes perfect good timing Greetings, Jennifer. Technical difficulties. We, we are recording. I hope that's okay with you. Uh, we have a question from Murray as well. Yes. You're uh, muted, Murray. There you go. Yeah. I have two questions. The, mm -hmm. the first is, I've noticed in past sessions that people have been able to uh, press, do something. They did something, and they got a little hand raised up on their screen. Yes. And I, and I wonder how to do that. Okay, if you want to do that, uh, you want to go to reactions at the bottom of your screen, and that should allow you to have a raise hand button available to you there. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, so if uh, anybody has I... questions, uh, they'll be taken in the order of the hand raising. It, it'll go and cycle through at the top, whoever has their hand raised. And okay, uh, my second, you my could second also... question. Oh, yes, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, my, my second question is it's actually more, well, I, I guess it's a question. Um, I think that when when the session is is rolling, and if people have their um, if people have their their mic and their audio on at the same time, I think we're getting some feedback. And I just wonder whether I could ask everybody to mute while while Steve runs through everything. And then if you need to say something, you can turn on you can unmute. That that would make sense. So okay. uh, active participants. Uh, will be live and then if anyone's taking over you know we can mute i probably won't mute just as a default because i will respond to things pretty regularly and same for betsy so yeah yeah except if uh, the siren goes goes down the street so I, I live next to the freeway so whatever happens you know you're going to get that background noise uh okay does that answer your question then at least for okay uh so i'm going to go ahead and share my screen and let's go ahead and pull up Chris Lee's profile here. I love this because I actually did uh, work on this profile. Can everybody see that? Yes. Okay. Uh, so you'll notice at the top, yeah, he has a very long name here. He's got some titles. I think this is Order of the British Empire. You know, so he's CBE, uh, CSTJ, and he gives his... Um, you know, his birth, uh, birth year and death year. And you'll notice there's some additional things that uh, are on my screen. Like here I have the, um, the 25 degrees that are indicating how close he is to me. So that's something that you might not see unless you have the uh, Wikitree browser extension, which I highly recommend because that does make the site even more awesome than it already is. Uh, if we go down here, you'll see that he has, you know, birth date and death date information here. It's pretty standard for most of the profiles. Um, you know, they did figure out, you know, who his parents were. And if you click on ancestors, uh, this will automatically generate a, um, it's probably at the bottom of the page. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Okay. So it just took a little bit of time to load, 
Um, but this generates a basic pedigree chart. And you can see that we have pretty much fleshed out a lot of his lines, uh, but there's still some of the Italian lines and South African lines uh, that, you know, can use some work. So anyone's definitely welcome to add on to those lines and for more uh, flesh out uh, his genealogy. And that makes us more connected and, and we're all interconnected here because this is one giant uh, tree. It's a single family tree across the entire world. So we call it the world tree. So while someone may refer to, you know, their family tree, they're referring to their branch of the world tree. And that's the thing. We're all going to tie into some element of the world tree at some point. Uh, some of us are still unconnected. So it's just a matter of making those connections to attach to a, a common ancestor in the back. Uh, you know, in, in history here. And I'm going to readmit Jennifer since she's I, I did it. the yeah. waiting room here. And I just want to um, piggyback sure, go ahead. on that just to um, encourage everybody to add in family that's not in your direct line, like your grandparents, brothers and sisters. Um, because those sort of collateral branches can be ways that you can get more strongly connected to the mm -hmm. tree. Um, yeah. Sometimes people just sort of do their 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 grandfather and their great great grandparents in second grade and and only right. very singular. Yeah. So the direct ancestry is one way to connect people, but we also can connect through marriages. And then if there are siblings, those siblings can branch out. And then you can create a descendancy chart off of those descendants. So you can click on any one of these old people, and then you can see that right next to their name is a descendant list. So say I wanted to look at Constant Hayward's descendants, Chris Lee would be one of those descendants, and this would actually open up her page and then show me the descendant list. And you'll see that, yeah, there is Chris Lee as one of the great, great grandchildren. And then, you know, his sister and then his parents so forth so it continues back up the tree to that point of origin so you can look at it in two directions and that's great if you want to see those adjacent relationships if you want to see you know who the brothers and sisters are and then that's a way of finding cousins as well eventually you go down to the modern era and you can identify the cousins of those people but i'm going to go back to chris lee's profile here and uh if i scroll back to what would originally been at the page uh, again, you can see that, you know, there's some private information in here, uh, private wife, private daughter, because they're still living. And the great thing about Wikitree is that, you know, if they are still living and if someone does not want that information out there, it will hide it, except for people that might be on the trusted list. Uh, trusted list can be sent to, you know, relatives, direct relatives or people working on those profiles in particular if they're part of a project. Uh, so notables may fall under that as well. Uh, depending of you know they have a approved status to become a little bit more visible than other types of profiles but generally if you're living you're not going to be visible unless you are signed in a uh, user of wikitree and then you can go down here and you can see that there uh, he's part of the england project so the england project has a sticker here indicating that he is part of that project and then anybody wants to discuss any additional things they can click on that and you know go to the england project and there's also a, a tag for it for uh, Wikitree's GGG, uh, the genealogist, the genealogist profile um, forum. Yeah, Steve, Steve, question. Yeah. Um, so this is an unlocked profile. Is it an unlocked profile or not? Yes. Yeah, uh, if I go to the top, okay. So I'm going to actually collapse his ancestors. And you can see at the top that there is a, a white unlocked uh, lock here. So that would mean that anyone can access this profile and edit this profile as a deceased notable. So he falls into both categories of being able to be edited, but mostly because he's deceased and has been for a couple of years. Um, you know, people can work on this readily. Uh, but as a notable, you know, we probably don't want to change much information here because most of this has already been fleshed out uh, and established. Uh, so, so there has to be something, you know, a little bit more unique if you want to add it to this type of profile, because, you know, we've already gone through and, and tried to clean it up. Uh, so if I continue down here, you can see that there's kind of like a general a summary of like what he did. So again, it says, you know, steamed actor, author, musician, notable for such iconic characters as Dracula, Scaramanga, Saruman, and Count Dooku. And he's also noted for being the oldest singer in the heavy metal industry because he released an album after he was like 90. And that's like, that's awesome. 
I think that's great. Um, and then, you know, he goes through the biography. It tells, again, it might reiterate what we're talking about up here, but it's going to have a little bit more information. Uh, you know, we can link to those profiles. Uh, we can talk about anybody that's being referenced here. So even Sir John Lavery isn't connected to him that way. Um, his mother, you know, was painted by this guy. So we can link to his profile and we can talk about the other person. And that's great for like little rabbit holes. We would just want to go off in a different direction. Um, talks about his service in World War II when he was fighting uh, with the British against the Germans. Uh, then it goes into his films, and, you know, and we just talk about some of these other connections like Peter Cushing to him because he would star with him. So you can link to Peter Cushing's profile. And again, it just continues to go so far uh, down the line here until he eventually passed away. Uh, oh, Karen is here. I'm going to let her in. Welcome, Karen. So letting her get logged in there. So, Karen, we're uh, just going through a, uh, a profile, an example profile here. And I'm just showing off Christopher Lee for a Star Wars day. So that's relevant, I think, to all of us. <laughs> Does everybody know how to uh, link to another profile in in a biography, like like um, Steve Stephen was pointing out? Mm -hmm. So, like this is a link. So, uh, if you can actually see my preview text, or even here on the page itself, so he has an identifier of Cushing dash nine four three. That is Peter Cushing's unique WikiTree ID. And if you want to simply copy it, you can use this uh, scissors button that says copy ID and you can click on it and it says it's been copied. And then you can copy and paste that into any text. And you might want to do a piped link, which means there's a, a straight pipe that would go after that. And then you just type the name of the person and then close the brackets to be able to create the pipe link. Right. So that, I, just that's... Put, I just put an example in the chat. Okay. Using myself as the example. So right, the... right. So checking the chat that that'll show you the formatting. We use the double brackets for links. And if we want to hide that actual name of the link and just, you know, have the name of the person, we use a pipe, a straight line, and then we type in the name of the person. Um, really, really helpful little yeah. formula. And, and that is a common wiki feature across multiple wikis on the internet, like Wikipedia, this one, the other ones I work on. Uh, and again, you know, it, it, images are really strong with this profile. Uh, I love that we have, you know, his image account, Dooku, we have Saruman, we have Dracula, uh, we have Scaramanga. So like all the really notable things that he was in. Uh, just a wonderful profile and then some, you know, actual images of him in real life. And again, another one with him and uh, Roger Moore, who was the second James Bond. And as you move to the bottom here, uh, you'll see that one of those sources was an inline citation. Uh, so I believe that we were citing, uh, yeah, one of the Bond uh, articles here off of Entertainment Weekly. And that will actually point back to where it was cited, which was right there. So like uh, it will have this little indicator here with a one covered by two brackets and then again it'll give you a preview uh, at least on what i'm looking at with the um the wiki tree source or sorry the um, browser extension uh will show that you know that's what the source is and again you can click on that and it'll take you back to the bottom of the page again where that is um the rest of these are more just accessible links you know his uh wikipedia profile uh, other articles talking about, you know, him passing away at 93. <laughs> I love the link here. <laughs> and just other things that are uh, available to talk about him. Someone else wants to explore him on IMDb or something else like that. So that's because he's a notable. We can use these as sources for this profile. I use sources, uh, you know, freely here, you know, with quotation marks. Uh, on other profiles, sources are going to be more pertinent to birth records, death records, we, we want to actually get those on those types of profiles because they're not notable people. And yeah. then at the bottom, you'll just see there's a couple of comments. People were talking about, you know, working on the profile and so forth. And there's me, which really would have been 100. So uh, and then at the very bottom, you can see that there's some matches and merges, you know, that we, there's nobody that's matching him. So we don't have to worry about that. Uh, we can see that he is connected into the trees. So he connects to all of these popes that were featured this week. And then you can see at the very bottom are all the categories, and these are all the things that he's part of. Uh, Commander of the Order of the British Empire, 
the Order of St. John. So that's what those acronyms were at the beginning. I have put him in Star Wars actors because that's what I'm doing. Uh, he also has a category for Middle Earth. So there are people working on those as well. And just a whole bunch of different uh, categories. And and that effectively is uh, Chris Lee's profile on Wikitree. Any questions about that at all? I think probably, so if you, could you scroll down to the reference, the sources again? Yeah, no problem. Oh, uh, yeah. Marie's, Marie's uh, yep. Uh, let me just say one thing, Marie, and then um, then we'll turn it over to you. Um, so the, the bullet points, if we were in edit mode, the bullet points would yeah. be, um, yeah, okay, Steve's going to do it, uh, I would be <laughs> generated by, um, by an asterisk, and that creates the bullet points. So... Um, <clears throat> so yeah, what we're looking at here is the raw wiki markup. So wiki markup is utilized to create these links, uh, to create these bullet points. And you can see that uh, the ones that did display at the bottom of that sources section are simply an asterisk. And then we have a link that is a single uh, bracket. Uh, for an external link, we use single brackets. And then we put the information in there, make sure there's a space close the bracket and so that's a link uh, an internal link is going to be two brackets and then whatever the situation here is uh, wikipedia is a unique one in that we can use double brackets for that um, but those will also allow us to link to things on wikitree uh, because they're using the same type of um, programming so like widmark 26 is a double bracket there's the identifier the wikitree id there's the pipe and then the name Dick Widmark is typed out, and then we close it with two brackets. So that creates the link to the profile in the text. It's pretty straightforward there. All right. Um, based on, on popular demand from last month, um, I, I uh, did a, a tip sheet. So there's, there's the link to that. I mean, there's nothing. This is just what has been useful to me. Um, and there are many other wiki trees who have something similar. And as you grow within your comfort with uh, wiki markup, um, you may want to make up your own cheat sheet. But you, you're welcome to use mine as a starting point. Um, Murray, sorry, we hijacked. And it's okay. That's it's fine. And I'm just going to return to profile without saving. I'm going to go ahead and just click this button so that I didn't do anything to it. It's perfectly fine. We're all fine here. How are you? So, Stephen, how are yes. you? And, 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 and why don't we go up to the top and see how you're related to him? Because you seem to be 25 uh, degrees away. Okay, let's go ahead and do that then. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the bottom of the profile. Oh, the bottom. And I'm going to check my connection. So I'm going to click oh. on see your connection. And you can do this with anyone who's connected to the wiki, to the, uh, the world tree which has over 31 million connected profiles, I believe. And uh, we can see that, uh, yes, there's Christopher Lee at zero degree, and then his sister, Xandra Lee, and then eventually goes through her husband, his mother, another husband. Uh, you'll also notice that the colors change when we uh, jump across lines that are not direct lineage. You'll notice that number six is also another notable, Winston Churchill. So the pathway actually goes through Winston Churchill to get to me. And I have discovered that Winston Churchill is actually a cousin of mine. So I have direct relationship to Winston Churchill. Neat. That is funny. Yeah. Uh, so it passes through him, uh, through some parents. Eventually it gets to another marriage here into the Ives family. And I connect to the Ives as I have a direct descendant that is a Ives. Mm -hmm. um, and that connects to Burl Ives. I'm actually a cousin of Burl Ives, like a fifth cousin or something like that. And then it drops down through my parents, and that might be personal information. So uh, anyway, <laughs> but eventually I'm there. <laughs> eventually you get to me. Uh, cool. and you can find out if he actually is connected to you for a common ancestor. So this is the relationship finder. So if you, I'm going to uh, let Rosalie get into the room here really quick. Just saw that. Uh, if I click the common ancestor, I'll see if I'm actually genetically related to him. And if I do that, I have to actually go back to the bottom, top of the page and it says, nope, no connection has been found yet. 
between Christopher and Steven. So I am not blood related to him, but that's cool. I'm still related to him for 25 degrees of other people, including notables. Yeah. Through any, and through yeah. his sister. So that, you know, sort of argues the point of like how, how valuable it can be to put siblings in. Right. And another way to look at it too, there actually is an alternative view of the generational path. So if you click on the generational path, it opens up a new screen and this actually shows the relationships uh, in this order. So you can see how it's going across through the sister and the husband to the mother, to her husband. And then there's a whole bunch of people connecting here off the of Winston Churchill. So the thing about that, Christopher Lee and Winston Churchill were only like six degrees apart. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? Uh, and then that goes back to a point where, you know, you hit the 1700s, you jump over on sisters and husbands again, uh, you come back to uh, these lines, and then eventually it goes forward to me. So then I'm just a straight shot back up to the, the top here. So uh, any questions on any of that at all? Oh, I'm still on that page. I may actually have to get out of screen share just so I can get back to the okay. well, thing I was looking yeah. at. <laughs> so we, should we go on to uh, Linda and yeah. Jennifer's profiles? I'm done screen sharing there. Okay. All right. So um, let's, let's see. I have, as usual, too, too many tabs. So let's, okay. Where? So... Um, I have, can everybody see my screen? I'm gonna put this down there, get out of that. And um, so um, Linda, this is your second, one of your second great grandfathers. Um, and, Lin and I asked Linda for you know, three or four profiles that um, um, we could take a look at. And, um, Linda, do you want to do you want to give us any background before we we dive in? Um, I don't know what kind of background did you care to know. I um, uh, just just anything in particular. If um, um, is he a particular interest to you? Um, uh, just anything with the research that you've done with him in the past? Um, are there are there brick walls that anything like that? Or uh, yeah, beyond beyond him, Sarah Adams is a brick wall, and his grandfather is a brick wall. So I see. Okay, so that those trees are brick walls for me. Beyond, I know. I think his family came from Ireland. I have no, Sarah Adams was from Virginia. That's all mm -hmm. I know. Mm -hmm. um, and I was pretty close to his son, my great grandfather, so, huh. who, raised, who raised my father. So. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, so although you didn't, you didn't know him, your your great grandfather would have been able, able to tell you stories. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, great. And those those sorts of things could go, well, I can see, you know, you've already got a memory here. Um, so, you know, you could add those family anecdotes there. Um, right. Okay. So um Biggest thing, oh, Murray, I'm sorry, you did have, did you have a question? No, okay. Um, biggest thing is we need to get you some sources here um, and, and format them um, in a way that it's, um, you know, generally the way WikiTree formats them. Um, yeah. I have a comment on that find a grave, for example. Sure. So I know that the index gets sourced a lot but if you actually go to the find a grave page itself at the bottom is the more detailed citation. So I usually copy and paste that because it mm -hmm. actually has the name of the cemetery and some of the birth date and death date record on the gravestone, plus the person who's moderating that profile as well. So I recommend uh, actually going to the page if at all possible for that person. So the memorial link is right there. You can, you know. So, so actually let me, Okay. Um, no, I haven't so, gotten good at that yet. It I, I haven't really learned how to use 
I've just begun to learn how to use that little thingy at the top. The, to the one? Transfer things. I, I was doing it all by hand before. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, so can I go? So I here, I, here we are at um, George's Find a Grave entry. Can I do this? Can I enter the source for you? Yeah, that would be wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So um, I have the Sorcerer app. And uh, maybe Stephen, could you put the help page for Sorcerer in the uh, in the uh, chat? I'll have to get out of the screen share here. One moment. So uh, all you have to do once you're on the page is click on the one and mm -hmm. say now I don't. You're you're. Um, let's just do it as a as a source citation, and as you can see, it works in the blink of an eye. It's copied to my clipboard. Now I'm gonna come back here, edit, find a grave. Um, I, I was I was gonna say, could we use it to source something? And it certainly is, is supporting that he passed away in 1929, but we would prefer, Wikitree would prefer not to use find a grave as a right. source. So now I'm gonna right. come there. And I use it go. predominantly for just burial information to prove that they're buried at said location. Yep. And I just pasted it. It already has the asterisks. Um, so now that means we could take this away. Perfect. Yep. And in fact, well, I can see now, now we'll, we'll go back and, and get some other things. Um, right. Add sources. Right. So we like it for addenda mostly. Yeah, in fact, you could do a C also section. You could have all your vital records, your censuses, and then underneath C also. And um, in fact, with Christ uh, Christopher Lee's profile, um, those articles that Stephen was pointing out, those could be a C also section. True. Okay. Yeah, they're not true sources. They're more like C additional information. So I could right. still do that and, and move those over. Yeah. Maybe I'll do that right so now. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, Rolf, go ahead. So how would you uh, create a section called C also? C also? Yeah. yeah. Um, so. I will do it to Chris's and then I will show everyone. Oh, okay. Are you there? You quickly? Uh... Let's go back. Yeah, let, let's uh, go ahead and put me back into your right, screen. Out. That's okay. Of course. Go ahead. Yes, we can see it in action. Okay, I'm going to stop yours. I'm going to kick you out. Yep. Okay. And then I'm going to go back to family search on there. Okay, so I'm up now. And then uh, now, I, again, I just did a search for him really quick. You can actually do this too. So you can search for Christopher Lee. If you don't know his exact ID, you could just type in his name at the very top here of any page, you know, Christopher and Lee, right? And do a search and you'll find anything that matches that person's name or close to it. And it's not these people, it's not these guys. Well, Christopher hey, Columbus. Can you show, show one thing um, up mm -hmm. back up top, Stephen? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, I find it really helpful to mm -hmm. sort by birth date. Right. Yeah, that's that's the easy way. Now it's going to give you all the different variations, but then you can see like who the oldest ones are, like 1595, 1692, um, and it'll give them approximate you know birth locations and stuff. So most of these people are in Ireland and Germany, um, but I did see him on that last page, so I'm going to go back because <laughs> he's passed all these Christopher Columbus Lees, and there is Christopher Frank Carandini Lee. That's the guy we're looking for. Uh, so I'm going to click him open again. And this time I will edit his profile. So I'm going to click on edit profile and family relationships at the top. And we're going to go back to that sources section. And it's just being a little laggy because we got Zoom running at the same time here. That's what it does sometimes. Okay, I'm going to open that up a little bit more. Let's see here. So the sources section again doesn't have a separator between the main sources uh, header and the rest of these, what we would call see also's. Uh, so the see also section is going to simply be created by me making a couple of words here. 
and putting a little colon. Uh, we don't even have to add an uh, asterisk to this because the rest of these are asterisks and they will all line up after this as long as there is a space in between the references HTML tag and that text it won't bunch it all together. So if I preview this, you're gonna see at the bottom of that now is a separated area that says see also, and all these would definitely fall within the see also category. And then a more true source, which, which in this case is just a inline citation that we're using to reference this article, that's gonna stay up in the sources section. So I mean, again, imagine that these are legitimate sources and that you would have your brief and death dates and you know all your records that would correspond to that. And any additional information, like a side page that talks about it, you know, could go into that see also section. And then I'm just going to indicate that it did add the see also section here. And I will commit the changes, the fully save that. And now that we've saved the profile, it should be back at the bottom, just like that. So there you go. It's as simple as that. So I'll let you take over again, uh, Bessie, if you want to do okay. that. All right. Uh, so we'll go back to, uh, let's see. There we go, George Andrew Conway. Um, so one thing um, that can be really, really helpful is down here on the right under research, you can do root search for George Conway. And what it's going to do is it's going to take all the information that you've already input with regard to birth date, place, death date, place, and just put it in a form. And then you can see at the bottom, you have your choice. You can search family search, ancestry, wherever. Um, I'm going to go to family search because um, there's no paywall there. There's a very rich um, database of records. So let's see what comes up. When I started my pages, there was no family search. So. Really? Right. And then wow. I, gave, I gave up and quit. And now there's family search and I've started a tree there. So I'm, I haven't yeah. gone back. Yeah, well, there, there's a way, and I can show how to do this. There's a way to, um, to connect him, um, the, two, the two profiles. Um, so that when you're on family search, you can see his WikiTree ID profile. And when you're on WikiTree, you can see the family search ID, um, which, is, which is nice. Um, Bessie, um, this yeah. is Jennifer. I know uh, I'll wait for my turn for a lot of my yeah. questions, but um, I was putting someone in, at least I thought I was doing something right. And I went to the root search uh -huh. and there was, it was empty, it was blank when I clicked on root search for my person, there was nothing there. I put in his name because yeah. I knew there was stuff on family search for him right. I got my records. But anyway, I, I don't know what I was doing wrong. So maybe when we get to mine. Okay. Um, All right, well, maybe we can try and repeat that and see, yeah. see what happens. Okay. Um, so let's see. Um, it looks like we have a death certificate of his daughter, right? And, but I did see the death certificate for him, um, which I know, which I think you. Let's see. There's finding let's grave. Well, this principle in your life being his own, so I mean, certainly answers the his find father, a grave. Father, father, father. Principle. Let's find a grave. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's an obituary. And those don't usually provide as much information. Yeah, here's a census. This is this is good because he's only five years old at the time of the census. Assuming this is the correct one. How yeah. do you know this is the right George Conway? Right. Well, got to go to it. Let's go uh, check it out. Yeah. Okay. So, Linda, what do you think? Actually, um, we're we're gonna we're gonna look at it <laughs> yeah I, ha I don't know about petersburg i'd have to look at where his father's name in that census Oops. okay let's find him um so we've got rough, well, I rough that they have um occupations on this one yeah 
carpenter. Right there we go. There we go. Okay. Conductor. So yeah, five-year-old George. What does that say? Ben Benjamin Conway. Benjamin Conway and That's Catherine. Not the right Conway. Was his not father right. a railroad conductor then? Well, his father's name was not Benjamin. Yeah. So, I mean, this is this is why we look at it. Um, so we just go back. Hmm. Oh, I'm stuck in the loop. Okay. Here, let me do this. Yeah, family search can do that to you sometimes. <laughs> they have um, a very strange programming. See, his father's name was. Um, well, I can't. I can't. It just wasn't Benjamin. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that, that's... I think it was also George. Uh-huh. But I'd have to have my tree in front of me, so... Okay, so, well, here's George A. Conway. Uh, children, Robert A. Conway, does that sound right? Yes. Yes, sorry. That that's... was definitely, that was my grand great-grandfather. Okay, all right. George so, Andrew Conway. Now we can go ahead and click on his uh, uh, find mm -hmm. or not family mm -hmm. search profile. Yeah. So, all right. So, how does this look? Uh, estimated birth year 1856, widowed in 1920, living in New Hanover, North Carolina. Does that seem like we have the right person? Workplace for children. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so what we can, um, okay, great. We've got all these other people. So what we can do, this is another great thing about family search is just copy the citation. And then when we go back over here, um, we can edit and, um, let's see. I'm going to do an inline citation for you just so we can see what that looks like. Okay. So um, in 1920, uh, he was living in, sorry, what was the name of the? New Hanover. New North Carolina. Is that the county of New Hanover or is that the city or village? Do we know that based off the document? um it does not say i yeah i i have i have a feeling it's a township yeah I'll look it up um if they don't nice. provide another name it's usually the county yeah um and then all i would do i've, I've written this fact and i would hit c Cite your source and then just paste in. Okay, so New, New Hanover yeah. County is where Wilmington is. Well, that makes sense. So Wilmington is the seat of New Hanover County. And yeah. if it just says New Hanover and nothing else in front of it, I think they're usually indicating that's just county. Well, I right. did have family that moved to Wilmington for a short while. All right, well, there's your connection. Uh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they've been in uh, mostly in Virginia, mostly, mm -hmm. and then North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So now it's developing a story. And that's the great part about this is that you can flesh out a biography and you can really talk about like all the places that they went. And it's not just a bunch of stats anymore. It's they, they really do flesh out as people on our mm -hmm. wiki here. Oh, yeah. And the really nice thing that I also like here is you can see well, you said that Robert was your grandfather? Great grandfather. Great yeah. grandfather. He okay. is my father, but he is my great grandfather. Got it. Um, if I click on his hyperlink, it will take me to his entry on the census. And then if I, if you wanted to put that on his profile, here's the link, here's the citation so that it's properly formatted for Robert as opposed to George. 
Excellent. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. But going back, as, um, as Steve pointed out, what we can see here on the right is here's his family search entry. So if we go there, wow, look at that. He has 33 sources. Wow. So there's quite a lot that you can get off of family search. And now, didn't you say that you had, what year did he die? Mm. 1929. And you had a death record, 1929. Right. Let's see. Be, yeah, if you go to the bottom, they will be in order by year. They are in order. Okay. Yes, there it is. Because um, I noticed that you did, you linked via ancestry, um, which, you know, sometimes that's the only place to get the record. But if you can link through family search, it's nice because there's no paywall. Absolutely. So, yeah. If we go there. Oh, beautiful. Uh, there's an image for it too. There it is. You could, um, I won't take the time right now, but you could zoom in and, and read all M Emma, the wife's ma um, name matches. Mm -hmm. And you could Give take all that data from there and put it into his profile. So like right. cause of death, et cetera. Like you can really flesh it out and make it nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that and then go back to his profile and I'm going to make an inline citation mm -hmm. like that. Wonderful, and, absolutely wonderful. Yeah. And that now um, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this. Is that okay? Because we- Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So yes, have fun with those 33 sources. <laughs> yes. Well, now you may I wanna go through and make sure that they are actually legitimately his sources because someone could have connected them and assumed no, that it no, was him. I know that I know that that's him. I, I okay. absolutely but, yeah. I know my family very, very well. I have dabbled in and out for years and years. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just found issues where I had to clean up a lot of stuff during say connect a thon. So mm -hmm. there were things where people were duplicated. There were sources mm -hmm. that attached to people that didn't actually yes. use it. And in family search somebody has actually put Mm -hmm. a different wife in my family and I wrote oh. to them saying how do I get rid of this woman she doesn't belong in the family and they gave right. me a whole hobble gobble bunch of stuff and I don't know right yeah so I'm just saying you know you want to still take things with a grain of salt yeah uh, just because it's on family search doesn't mean it's uh true <laughs> right. Right. um Murray what was your question you're muted Murray I've been noticing uh, beside the where beside, underneath the privacy and changes thing yes. that you've got a whole bunch of icons that I don't I don't what what are those right um, and this is because I have well I have a couple of extensions so I have okay. the uh, the WikiTree browser extension and I have yeah. WikiTree B e. um, so they they uh, let's see what does this do um build the end this is um an ancestor list steve do you do you uh do you want to speak to these okay this is I, b this is b is it wiki tree b, b? yeah okay yeah yeah I, mean, I, I, I they're trying to integrate b into the uh the wiki tree browser extension i think they're yeah, merging yeah. a lot of this stuff together now but you get shortcuts for things like fan charts and you can see that green button i think that's the connections button um you know just a couple of little tools and toys and nice little stuff that that is a that's shorthand cool. if you just want to have it on the page and not have to go into the the drop downs you know up top but again there's there's multiple ways to access this information and you know, i'll show i'll show you one one reason why i had deactivated b because what, like what Stephen was saying was that WikiTree browser extension is so comprehensive. But if I go back to family search, okay, and now I'm in sources for George A. Conway, I can do this, get all citations. What? I get the little tree that's thinking and thinking and thinking. It takes about, uh, it takes maybe- I didn't know about that <laughs> Yeah, this is so cool, Sandy Paddock. I'm still finding look, stuff. Oh, that's look crazy. Look at this. 
then you can. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. Now, I get so excited. <laughs> I know. Um, I, I did this uh, on Sunday. Um, I grabbed a whole bunch of sources for somebody, but I did. I went through every single one and it wasn't 33. It was like 12. I don't but know if I, I could do that. I, I feel like I would have to go for every one of them line by line before I <laughs> sign off yeah, on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I did. I, I went through every single one that was available for the person I was doing, but right. then you just, you just copy it in if it's all good. So. Now, so that get all citations button, that's that's because of B. That's because B2B. of B, yes. And I tried okay. it, tried deactivating because somebody told me, oh no, you need B. And so oh. and then I deactivated B and it didn't work. So you do need to have B on. So what I understood was things are moving over to Wiki, the browser extensions. Yeah. And that and that some things could bump into each other if you had if you had WikiTree B running. Yeah, and so I, it's best not to have WikiTree B on if you're really using the extensions. That is true. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Um, I have okay. So, that, so, I, so I've, I've avoided B until now. So okay. Yeah, I don't understand. What are you talking about, WikiTree B? All right. So there are there's a there's a thing called a browser extension, and basically what it means is that while you're using WikiTree. You can have extra powers, okay? These abilities to do things that you weren't able to do before, okay? Now, for example, this this get all citations button. That's like a superpower, right? But it wasn't there before, and now apparently they can't build it into WikiTree because that code base is kind of locked and solid, and they don't want to start messing around in there anymore. But they can build these layers on top of WikiTree. And now I only recently got those because they weren't on my Safari browser on a Mac, but they are on all the other browsers on all the other platforms. So, so you can get these um, and they just, they just give you capabilities that you didn't have before. And I think, I think uh, that Stephen and, and, uh, and Betsy have been showing you different aspects of um, WikiTree extension. The WikiTree browser extension is what it's called. I just got an update on that today, and mm -hmm. and one of the cool one of the cool things is when you get to a footnote, and and you just hover over that footnote, a little window is going to pop up and show you instead of you having to go down to the footnote and read it, it's going like to pop that. it up. Yeah, like like that. Yeah. Right. That's because of the WikiTree browser extension. Right. And and if you remember, if you remember, I asked Stephen about how he was how he was connected to Stephen Lee and that's because there was a little symbol up near the top and it said 25 degrees mm -hmm. and that's not normally that's there on the base version yeah you don't see that but, if you're just using it without right so but if you have that then you'll see it but if you go to somebody that you're related to and this is here's mm -hmm. this this cool thing so I so I just randomly got to ended up at this guy's profile okay he was he was a he was just on somebody else's profile and I clicked on it and went to look and this guy was related to me 12 ways. And, and it had the list. It showed me the list of all the ancestors that we had in common. And they were like eighth, eighth, ninth, and 10th great grandfathers, 12 of them. It's like, wow. I wouldn't have known that. How would I have known that, right? Yeah. You would have to do it by hand without the extension. Yeah. Mm hmm. I really love that component is that it can immediately show those types of relationships, especially for your direct ancestors or your cousins that are connected into. And then that can help you figure out like who you need to talk to for additional research. You know, somebody else might be working on the same lines. Yeah. I could show yeah, another one that I am connected to if you want me to share my screen well, again. I, I, yeah. Yeah, actually, um, I'm That's thinking it. we should switch over to Jennifer's You're right. uh, profile. Just to, to make sure that we have enough time. I'm already talking uh, about myself enough today. <laughs> no, no. Uh, let's see. I have to find. Where am I? Okay. All right. Does everybody see Samuel Alexander Halsey? Uh, I, I see story. George Andrew Conway. Oh, really? Okay. Well, maybe let me stop sharing. And then I'll share again. 
Mm. Okay, how about now? There he is. Yes. Okay, great, great. Um, and um, this is your grandfather, right, Jennifer? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Do you want to do you want to give us a little background on your I mean, you must have uh, must have personal memories. Um, oh, yes. With, but many, yep. many, many. Yes. I um, I have a lot of information. Well, I think I have a, a lot of information on my father's family, more so than my mother's family. So I said I would start with them. Um, I spent summers with my grandparents in North Carolina. Um, my grandfather ended up, grandparents ended up moving from North Carolina uh, to Maryland and lived with my parents um, until they passed away um, in the uh, 80s. Uh, so um, very close to my grandparents. Um, I'm very fortunate to have a lot of photos, mm -hmm. uh, some wow. that are over 100 years old. Wow. So I have pictures of my great grandparents, great uncles, um, yeah, yeah. So it's a treasure. Yeah. That is not necessarily common to have. I don't have many images of some of my great grandparents, or you know, even grandparents in certain cases. So mm -hmm. it's it's very fortunate that you have that. Mm -hmm. I still don't know what I still haven't. Um, I've gotten them copied and they're on a flash drive and everything because I'm the keeper of the original photo. So I have the original photos and then I have copies on a flash drive, but I, I haven't really done anything with them. I'm like scared. <laughs> I don't know what to do with them, <laughs> but I would like to be able to get them on some kind of blog or something labeled, you know, so they're at least in two or three different places. Right, yeah. digitized. So in case anything happens to the physical copies, you still have digital versions of them. I attended an event um, several years ago with uh, the uh, National Museum of African American History and Culture. Um, they were going around the country doing these Save Our Treasures events, and they were in Baltimore. And I was able to get probably about 100 150 of the photos scanned and so okay. they gave me the flash drive and they said do you mind if we you know have access to your photos and I was like no I, I don't mind um but they're not I don't think they're labeled <laughs> I don't think I don't remember them taking the time to say oh this is Samuel Halsey this is who is this is but they 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 scanned them so they do have mm -hmm. 150 of them anyway. um, well have you have you put any photos up to the corresponding person on wikitree yet no because i i'm just getting stupid and i was like yeah. like for instance i was trying to put up documents uh -huh. and i know i have i have them on my computer but they're not labeled necessarily mm -hmm. you know i uh, I just have that general generic code that I, you know, I got the document off of, of family search or ancestry. And so the other day I was looking for the marriage certificate um, for my grandparents and I know I have it. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, I spent hours, you know, well, not hours, but longer than necessary trying to find it on my computer. And then I was yeah. like, okay, now I found it. How do I get it onto Wikitree? I didn't know how to upload it. I, I didn't know what to do. Okay. Right. So I'm thinking if you got it from Family Search, the better thing would be to just find it again on Family Search, uh -huh. link it with the with the link, you know, the URL to the record, rather than uploading a PDF or an image of the record. Okay, so Wikitree doesn't necessarily want images. They just right. want the link. To right, the right. Depends. I mean, we, we images as in photographs of people, yes, or of um, but of documents. I mean, I I, I confess, I when I was first starting out at, uh, at myself, I was uploading copies of death certificates, images of, and then I realized, oh no, that's not the right way to do it. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. I was wondering about that because I was like, well, I've got all these images that are on, you know, from family search and, and right. various places, you know, mm -hmm. how do I get them up there? So what I did is I, I found like, um, I just found the marriage certificate, um, for his mother and mm -hmm. Eleonora. For, for, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I, just cut and paste where it says source, uh, citation, cite this. Mm -hmm. So I just copied that and pasted it on here. I think it's on here at okay. the bottom. Okay, let's have I don't know. it. Mm -hmm. no, I, guess I, I guess I didn't save it. Okay. So that's where I'm running into issues. It's like, I don't know what I'm doing. Sure, well, let's see if we can quickly find that again. Um, you found it on Family Search. Yeah. If what did I, I went to, yeah, and see, yeah. okay, there's, okay, Eleanor, now family um, search, on her, okay, there, is this, this it, the marriage, yep. this is them, great, we look at that, and, um, and you've looked at the record, the actual record, and, now that's a, that's a different document, that's a ledger, but there is actual, the actual marriage license, is oh, I want to click on her name then. Yeah, the Let's actual see if we can find that because the marriage license has their their parents' names on there. Yes. That might yeah. be the one because North Carolina marriages is a different. Uh, oh, image availability. I don't know hmm. why they're not letting you find it. Let me. I would say click on her name and then see all the the sources that are attached to her. Since we've already proven that that's the one, right? Mm -hmm. Only eight sources. That's not bad. But there's no death date for her. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I have cannot find a death date for her. I have a general idea, but I I can't, have not been able to. However, I, 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 did, I, I did notice that on your on her son's marriage record, in I think it was 1929, Samuel's record mm -hmm. marriage record. She is listed as deceased. His father. Yeah, she, I, she, there were five children. And from, I roughly, she doesn't appear on the 1910 census. She's on the 1900 census. So she dies sometime between 1900 and 1910. But when, I don't know. Right. So what you could do on her, I don't know what you did. Um, you might be able to search okay, newspapers for uh, an obituary and see if that, you know. Yeah. You could say about out. or before. About or before and put a general, yeah. put in. Yeah. Um, and then put in a research note. Do you know and She how to died do young, too. She died at says, around 30 or 31. Um, so maybe there is some kind of article indicating, you know, did she die in an accident? Was there something tragic that happened? Like there's a lot more that we might be able to learn about this lady. Newspapers.com or Chronicling America. Chronicling America, but there's one from North Carolina in that area. Um, I mean, that's that's not an uncommon name. That That is a very unique name. And I just wonder if uh, I can find something myself right now. And that's the other thing. I thought with that last name, Outer Bridge, I would be able to find a lot of stuff. And it's been a slow go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to look at. Uh, okay, now go back one. Let's see, where is that? Uh, go back one page where it says image 421. Go back to image 420. Ah, uh, yes. So it's good to check the pages back before right now. Okay, Woo! that's their marriage. That's their marriage. Wow. Yep. Yep. 1900 to 1910. Okay. So if we go to let's let's do this. I have Wilmington, North Carolina just popped up, 1906. First page could be a deaf record. Now you see here the record is linked to Jesse. Oh. So if we Genius H outer we want to get the reference for Eleonora click on her now this is going to give the citation okay and so and i just copied this and pasted this yep 
So that's do what you I do it for you or do you? Sure, sure. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I just copied it. And you go to edit. Okay. I didn't uh, know. What edit. Use this edit. Use this draft. Start with previous draft. Looks like, yeah, it looks like. Okay. Yeah, was, was, there, there it is. So I did save something. You save something, but what I just added is is a little more robust. Okay. It, it is the same because if you look at the the record collection title, it is the same collection. It's the same record. Okay. You, yeah. Okay. So I'll get rid of that. And you know what? Now that we've added a source, we can get rid of that. That's a template of unsourced. Okay. Um, and funny, I'm finding a Professor Stephen W. Outerbridge. Yeah, and that's the only Outerbridge I've been able to find. And the little bit that I found out about him, mm -hmm. I, he was, a, I believe, a school teacher. And I don't think he ever mm -hmm. married, had any children. It says uh, that he had his 81st birthday honored in uh, 1906. Is that right? 1905. Uh, he began his life work at the Hassels, enrolled at the Company of Confederates in 1861, served two terms in the legislature, and from 1895-1901 taught at Robersonville, having been a teacher for 56 years. So um, I don't know if he's connected to your outer bridge, but that certainly is something oh, interesting. Yeah. It is. I agree. It's a, it's a very unique name. They um, are, um, from what I found, it's uh, England, Australia, and Canada is where mm -hmm. you find outer bridges. Okay. Yeah. Now, is it correct that you do not have um, a profile yet for Jesse, her husband, right? I thought I did. No, no, no. Uh, I thought I did. Jesse Alexander. Um, mm -hmm. Well, right now you see, I'm. She doesn't have a spouse. Oh, okay. So, so I thought so I had. No, no. You know what? No, I have Samuel, her son, and then I think I started working on her, mm -hmm. and then I think I started working on Jesse the other night. But I don't think I saved it or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I was doing. So, so I'm just going to tidy this up just a little bit because I see actually if we go, if we go back here, you've done an inline citation to say that you'll add sources. Okay. <laughs> so, so let's just go back, and I mean, you are the pro, you're the profile manager, right? Yes, yes. Yes. I'm the only person on this thing. So I think we can we can let this go. Take that out. Yep, because, um, yep. And what we'll say is she married Jesse Halsey. Um, on, did we have a date on that marriage? Uh, yes, yeah, so if we go back to that form. Um, Let's see. Um, I don't remember it offhand. Uh, December 16th, 1896. December 16th, 1896. Grandfather was born two years later. In Washington, North Carolina. It's actually Plymouth is the town. Oh, okay. And Washington is the county. So I don't know. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Plymouth. Um, and then what we can do is we can grab this again and make an inline citation here. And now that we have that, then we don't need it here. We'll okay, so right you are when you put the citation in, you're writing a little explanation above it as to actually what the citation is about. I think I found yes. Something. Yes. Uh, well, I'm using it to support a point in the biography. Okay. She very just, and um, so now we can preview and see. This is what it looks like. There's there's what we said, and okay. then it's supported by that. 
Okay, um, the other thing that we can do is uh, let's, when I remember when I was new, I just saved all the time. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, just because I was nervous. <laughs> and then uh, now, now I do bigger chunks of work um, in one go. But um, the other thing we can do is, well, you'd have to create, you know, you could create um, your, her husband with that. Okay. I know who her parents, I have parents' names also. Great, good. Um, but what and I- And siblings. Wonderful. Yeah, you're, you're really, you're going to be able to flesh out these branches easily then. Yeah. Yeah, I have um, census you, records with, with that information. Good, good. Um, can we create, Jesse? Is that okay? Sure, sure. Okay. So what I'll do, I, you know, I'll create him and then I'm going to orphan him so that <laughs> you can be profile manager. Okay. Uh, so we go over here and we add a spouse. Spouse. Uh-huh. Create a new profile. Okay. You're, you're going to have to help me here. Jesse. Al uh, Halsey. Halsey. There's a spot for a middle name later. Yeah. Okay. Do you have his birthday? Um, I his birth date I got off of uh, marriage and census records. Okay. And there's a difference, and I know what it was yesterday. I was putting it in, and I've got eighteen seventy five and eighteen seventy six, I believe. Um, and I I don't know which is. How to put that in if you're not sure of the date. Oh, well, e e easy. Okay, I put in 1875, and then I'm just going to select estimated or okay. uncertain. And then if you get something um, very precise, then you can just easily switch it to the certain. Um, and where was yeah. born? Uh, this was also in uh, Plymouth, North Carolina. Okay, Plymouth, Washington, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. it, it auto come it comes up automatically. And his death date? He dies in oh, 1956, I believe it was. 58. Okay. You'll find you it. Can... I was putting all this stuff in last night, but I didn't get it right. Okay, let's see. Was this his death? I'm sorry, I'm flipping through all this stuff. I can't, can't find it. I'll just put 1955. Uh, five. I can't. Um, okay, yeah, you can you can tighten it up later. Yeah, and it's roughly that time. Yeah, and death location. Uh, Plymouth, North Carolina. Uh, I also have another question. He was married three times. Okay. So um, how do I add the other wives? So that's, that's easy. Um, let me get him created first. Okay. Um, okay. So Eleonora has a child, which is Samuel, and Jesse is the other parent, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So... Yes, we click yes for that. And then the marriage date was December 16, 1896. And that's certain. And it was in Plymouth. Plymouth World. <laughs> it doesn't well, like that place. Yeah, it was sort of, it was, was popping yeah. up before, but. Even in uh, family search, I still have to type a lot. Washington, there, there it is. is. There it okay. Is. And then the marriage end date would have been when Eleonora died. Okay. I was wondering about right. that last night. I mean, I you could that. leave that blank. I certainly have done that, but um, okay. We're, we're going to leave that blank right now. Oh, I, did, I found the death date, if that makes a difference. Okay. We can go back in a second. Okay. okay. And then I'm going to. 
make the the citation for him. Okay. I'm not sure, I'm not sure that that really matters in a marriage record, but. Um, and when it says copy to clipboard, where is it going? Uh, your computer's memory. Oh, okay. Because I never yeah. know where it's going. Yeah. Uh, okay. There it is. I've just, that's the same marriage record. Okay. Um, I guess we can say marriage record. Marriage record. Mm -hmm. And then proceed to create. And now we're still in edit mode. And you said you found the death date? Yes. Uh, April 30th, 1958. April 30th, 1958. And now we can make that certain. Yeah. And do I need to put in uh, sources uh, the death certificate? There's that yes. Yes. Got that information from. So I'm going to put that he passed away, passed away on April 30th, 1958. And you could do an inline citation Very for that. Nice. Okay. And then I'm going to put. He married. Um, Stephen, could you look up Eleanor's profile ID for me? Sorry, my mouth was full. <laughs> um, I can I can definitely do that for you right now. <laughs> Ella, E L L E Nora, such a pretty name, Eleanora. Uh, what am I doing again? <laughs> looking, up, looking up her profile ID. Oh, oh, the profile ID of Eleanor. Yeah. Is that uh -huh. right there? Yep. One of your links. Uh, okay, I just need to search it. Better do 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 capitalize that and outro. So what we'll do is we'll do a hyperlink and Murray, I do see you. I will will <laughs> just oh, boy, really didn't like it when I searched for Eleanor at Outerbridge the way it was spelled. Um yeah, it's, it's spelled letter. a lot of ways. Wait, is it L E Nora or Yeah, you, you can pronounce it like I say Eleanor, it's but it's so weird. It wouldn't even give me like a, a related match, but there it is. Outer Bridge 89. Outer Outer Bridge 89. So if we do um okay. And even so then you should be able to see it on the side, like it, it'll be visible and that's true. That's true. The marriage. Um, so yeah, it, it should be on that page. Now once I have her in here for as much information then I can search other outer bridges to see if there's any connection. Oh yeah, you can just click on the surname and it'll pull up all outer bridges on WikiTree. Okay. And then you can sort it by birth date, death date, various other factors, and oh, okay. that help you find relationships. You'll see the ones in North Carolina or the ones in Virginia. Okay, so I'm going to take this marriage record minus the asterisks because that is a formatting thing. And now I'm gonna create an inline citation like that. And so with the death information, Jennifer, you'll just do the same thing here. Same thing, okay. So we'll do an inline citation and it will, it will become um, number two. Okay. And that way we can tie the source directly to the information in the biography instead of it just being a list of sources that you have to figure out what goes to what. Mm, okay. Okay. And just that's the beauty of the inline citations. It's a little complicated for certain people, but it really helps when trying to verify things. Okay. okay. And that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you'll see them used on Wikipedia and other wikis all the time because, you know, they want to make sure that every line has a citation associated with that information or else they'll yeah. remove it. I I also read or heard somewhere that I mean. should be adding uh, the African American heritage um, icon to every record that I create. Is that true, or, or only enslaved people? How, well, how does that work? That's a good question. I let me find out. I I know exactly. I would ask Emma. Yeah, oh yeah, Emma. Yeah, I knew I was it, somebody was yeah. telling me. And I was like, I don't know how to do that, and I don't yeah, know. Your, your style guide through a USBH would define yeah. that better than we can. Yeah. Um. So, and then I saw something last night about categories like state, 
uh, professions. And said, I'm glad you brought that up. Okay, so if we go back to edits, um, so Jesse definitely has a link with Plymouth. <laughs> We've seen that. <laughs> so this little icon here is categorization. Categorization. So if I just type in Plymouth, so many of them. And it's uh, Plymouth. Well, is there one? North Carolina, for, right? This is a township of Plymouth. Would that be right, Jennifer? I'm sorry. Uh, where Plymouth, are we? there's a category for Plymouth. Yeah, Plymouth Township. Yes, yeah, sometimes. North Carolina. Yeah. So we do that. It's actually not a city or a village, it's a township. Mm -hmm. it's and a that categorizes him. Um, and then you would say, I was doing categorization. Well, oh, and this say, is going to be the fun part. So now we can go to the category. We see if there's other people in that category. Uh -huh. So you can see that um, I, uh, because I use Wikitree browser extension and okay. I've, um, I've um, configured it so that my categories show up above the biography, okay. which, I, which I like. So great idea, Stephen. Okay, who's in the category? Not a lot of people. You can add. You can add Eleonora. Um, okay, Tootle. Um, that's the name of the family that runs um, funeral home mm -hmm. to this day, and mm -hmm. it's also, I believe, a mixed race family. Also, mm -hmm. interesting. And go to the top, then you go to the My Connections button, because you may not be aware of that. So this is a fun thing on any category on Wikitree, you can click My Connections and see if you're connected to any of the people in that category, including wow. assets, cousins, or uh, degrees. I, oh, look, look, I'm connected to Nancy Furlow Bateman. So there, okay. 25 degrees away. Uh, that's, that's somebody okay. that's also on Wikitree, or, or what? What is that? Yeah, thing? yeah, and this is the, the connection to, to me. Oh, okay. Uh, so let's see. Your uh, results may vary immensely. <laughs> uh, yeah, through my mother, through my through my Perkins line. Oh yeah. yeah. There's actually not that many jumps in there. It's it's a lot of a direct lineage for some good yeah. distance there. Interesting. Yeah, so definitely try that, Jennifer. Um, if you have a, a family connection to the town, um, that could be very, very interesting. Hmm. Okay. Connection finder. I, I love that feature. It's one of my favorite features of Wikitree. With, within the category, whatever the category. Right. My connections through the categories. And and also mm -hmm. my cousins, which which kind of plays into that as well. Mm -hmm. so. But yeah, that's just an example. Since uh, Betsy doesn't connect to it as much, obviously this is a little less uh, fleshed out. And look, when you're Matt, working on so um, a to person or a profile, how do you keep yourself from like going down another rabbit hole? Like, let's say I, <laughs> I want to just work That's on Samuel and get all his stuff in. <laughs> and, you know, next thing I know, I'm over on Eleanor's family and then I'm on her brother's family and and then I'm like wait a minute I didn't finish Samuel how how do I get back you know <laughs> there... well that's oh, a question of self control <laughs> um you could use something like um um David Randall's uh profile completion checklist mm. and just uh just say I'm not going to move on until I've you know, ticked all the boxes that I can with okay. this profile. But I mean, you know, it's hard. It's yeah. really hard to avoid those bright, shiny objects. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I think I'm, it's just seeing, it, it just basically means I just have to spend some time and that's just something I don't have a lot of. Um, so, um, my daughter was like, oh, you could spend three hours just clicking on census records. <laughs> so, it's very easy to fall down a rabbit hole. Even the best of us, you know, can get distracted by some other project or some other thing. And that's why the collaborative aspect of Wikitree is great, because we don't have to worry about everything out there. 
your cousin could help you with some other elements that maybe you haven't been able to get to yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I'm I'm really want to use the um, uh, what I just what I was just the categories yes. to flesh out. Um, Immensely helpful, and they can out. travel between them very quickly too. Mm -hmm. Like you know, my grandfather uh, Samuel, he was a cabinet maker. Oh, great. Um, he worked in wood. His father worked in wood. His father before him worked in wood. And, you know, that area is uh, Weyerhaeuser is a mm -hmm. big in there. And then my, um, there was the uh, family oral history of my great three times grandmother working on a paddle steamship, uh, paddle boat that went down the river. Mm -hmm. Um, after enslavement, she was a chambermaid on a paddle boat. So I want to learn more about the paddle boats and the steamships and yeah. all that. And like that could lead to making a free space page on that steamship or any of those things that you're interested in. Maybe other people want to know about that stuff too. So that, that could be another avenue for you as well. Yeah. Just finding the connections. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So much stuff here. All right. Uh, Murray, you've been so patient. Are you still there? Do you remember your question? <laughs> Let me mute. I, I just wanted to tell Jennifer, so you, you asked about the clipboard. You know when you do control C and control V? I know control copy C. Something? Yeah, cut and paste. Yes. Cut and paste. Okay. When you cut something, it goes in the clipboard. So all these all these different places that let you let you copy something, it's copying mm -hmm. it into the clipboard so that you can go somewhere and do control V and and uh, paste it in. Okay. I, That's yeah, what the clipboard was, is. Oh well, yeah, when it's, it says copy to your clipboard, I'm like, okay, where is that? <laughs> you know, it's like, just what? imaginary and floating in space. <laughs> I'm like, where's the clipboard? I was like, okay. <laughs> Um, in family search, I know I, I have a lot of stuff in my source box. Uh -huh. So can I, if I'm working on a particular person, can I just go to my source box and find that record instead of having to search all over again? Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't use that feature. I, I know of it, but I think so. Yeah, I think that's what it's there for. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll try it, see what happens. <laughs> yeah, I don't dabble in every feature in Family Search either. I mean, there's certain things that work for me and other things less likely, mm. but definitely everything within Wikitree, I've tried to try at least once to see if they'll find me, you know, give me another way to do a research that I haven't done before. Like, I didn't really do the rich text search because I just, I would go in and search myself. Mm -hmm. Also, Family Search can be particular if you give it too much information, it might not give you what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So I, I have a tendency to do more of a limited search in that regard to find exactly what I'm looking for. Um, Cause I don't want to deal with like 10,000 results. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think I like um, it's different. Everybody's Linda different. said something about um, uh, somebody going in and putting stuff on her tree or, or whatever. And I know I had, I had started out using the tree on family search and I just got so frustrated um, with you know people marrying my grandmother to her son or something and when i would write to them and say you know hey uh who are you and you know <laughs> this is wrong could you please stop or whatever yeah and then when i went to family search because it was something i had done because i didn't know what i was doing and i made a ridiculous mistake marrying um uh, an uncle to his mother or something like that. And I wanted to, I tried to fix it mm -hmm. and I couldn't delete it. And I was very frustrated. So I finally got somebody at family search on the phone and the best I could get from him was that they feel that deleting a person off the family tree of man is like killing them again or something like they didn't exist. And they wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. He said, well, we can put an explanation in, a written explanation as to why this is incorrect, but we're not going to delete them. And I was just like, I said, this is stupid. I said, it makes no sense. I said, I'm trying to tell you this is, you know, incorrect, but they yeah. wouldn't. 
But no, we don't you know think it. want things to get merged and I mean, WikiTree will want to merge profiles that exist as duplicates as well. I mean, technically you can delete a profile from WikiTree. It's not a common situation because there usually is a living person associated with every one of those profiles. Mm -hmm. uh, most times it's going to be a merge with an existing one that's already been made. Uh, but I mean, there's nothing actually stopping us from deleting a profile if completely necessary, at least on a, you know, on WikiTree. A family search has... I don't know what they're doing with their code, but yeah, I mean, they kind of make it a little limited as to what you can do with those profiles mm -hmm. if, if they don't actually exist, you know, right? Because they're, they're, basing, they're basically creating them off of sources. Like you, cr you have the source and then you create a person off of it, but, you know, the data has to be accurate. It also has to be, um, what's the word I'm trying to think of, transcribed correctly. So if somebody didn't transcribe yeah. it right, then that gets uh, lost in translation and that becomes a problem. At least in Wikitree, we can have a research notes section to define all the discrepancies and all the problems that are found on other sites so that we don't replicate those problems here, you know, and you can communicate with people more easily because you actually see who they are based on their profiles. You can see all the edits that they've made. You can talk to a moderator if you have an issue with that user, you know, like there are more options here to deal with that if necessary. Now, I know I do have a um, a discrepancy on a actual document of my great grandfather um they have his date of birth uh incorrect mm -hmm. and i've been looking at the record for you know years and i just had it in my book and i'm just you know copying the information and then one day i was like wait a minute i said his date of birth i mean Technically, he could have been 13 when my grandmother was born, <laughs> but I said, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I, you know, I, I, what I did is I, I had his marriage li certificate license. I had uh, probably four decades of census records with his information on it. And so I, I looked at all of that and I said, his own daughter, my grandmother, I guess in grief, when she filled out the death certificate, I don't know where she got that date from, but it's like 40 years <laughs> wrong. And yeah. I'm like, okay, this document goes back to 1946 mm -hmm. and it's incorrect. So I just put a note in yeah. Ancestry and Family Search, you know, what I found out. And I said, it's it's wrong <laughs> and you, you would want to do the same thing on WikiTree as well that research yeah. notes section you know that's going to explain like there was something wrong when they asked another person about this person's death they either put a number in wrong transcribed it wrong people get stuff all the wrong all the time human error is a big issue and we just got to figure out like what the actual data is um mm -hmm. you know sometimes you can't actually trust the document even though it seems like it's the, you know the most official thing like the death certificate and everything but you know, even the gravestones don't necessarily have the right dates on them, which yeah. is what somebody else might have told them. It's like, oh, yeah, he was born in 1859 when really he was born in like 1874 or something. Like maybe thought he was older than he was. Right. Mm -hmm. So they put that in the gravestone and everybody takes it as fact. And then we just be like, OK, well, it might be true. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where the death document comes in yeah. Yeah. or the or the birth record, you know, for that in particular. I have a, a problem with a, a name of an ancestor where the people who documented the records um, historically, um, you, you know, like uh, on the transcripts, incorrectly wrote their name. Their name was Fuchs, F-E-W-K-E-S. But they wrote it down as Fuso or, or F-U-K-E. You know, in other words, they, they miswrote it down on in two or three different ways on each document and it went down into records. So everybody wrote this person and then I couldn't find, I couldn't track this person down. And I finally found an, a DNA relative who was F-E-W-K-E-S that matched when I looked at the original documents and and everybody else has the name incorrect. Yeah. 
And, and he said, well, you might check in this state and this state for the people who came across from England. And, you know. Yeah, so I mean, very, if they were going through customs, people have heavy accents. People, you know, they might try to spell things out. But usually they're just trying to shuttle people through. So they don't have time to get down all the correct spellings of these names, especially if they're foreign names, right? You know, I find that with my German ancestors, like they'll have heavy accents. They'll say something with a, a V sound when really it's like a W. So so the translation will be lost there when someone in, you know, New York or Baltimore is trying to take the name down. And then you'll find that it just sticks because they wrote it down the wrong way. Uh, like my ancestor who was Ripkey actually became written down as Ribble. So like the K <laughs> suddenly disappeared and it became an L. Um, and it's just, you know, you run into things like that. But if you could tie it with the same person, you know, referencing their birth dates and death dates, those things should be more fixed in nature and the, and the names are going to vary. You know, like when you're looking at uh, census records, you know, someone's recording this information secondary or, the, or maybe it's their wife that gave them the name, you know, and it wasn't the person there available. So, yeah, they're, they're hearing this from someone else and they're writing down what they think it sounds like. So you, you get like these weird names on these records you know because of that secondary nature to it but mm -hmm. you know again those are all different factors that play into that and you just got to corral them together and compare them side by side and make sure that you're talking about the right person here right i mean like like steven's saying i mean the if the if the dates match and also the family names match like you know the relationships the, yeah the relationships yeah, yeah. like the narrative. I, I would be confident in that case because the chances I'm, that these two finding people in yeah. with um I don't know if this is true but in in others research but in African American research if you have enslavement um you know a lot of times you don't have a last name but I'm I am finding last names but I'm also finding surnames as first names and at first you know people were dismissing and saying oh no that that's not related because that's his first name that's not his last name and I said no no, no no I said you need to wait a minute here I said if they're in the same area of the, the the country or the town or whatever it's highly likely that someone said oh well I like that name even though that was massa so-and-so's last name I have a I'm question for you son, this first name and uh, finding these people are related I have a question, Jennifer. So mm -hmm. I was doing some of that research on the Outer Bridges, right? Mm -hmm. And I actually found a record in Maryland that talked about a Mary Ella, daughter of Outer Bridge Horsey. And I thought, well, this is weird. I'm looking for the last name, but it's coming up as the first name. And I'm just wondering if they flipped it and the guy's actual name was Horsey Outer Bridge. Quite possible. I, I'm running into, in, in Virginia, it's got some <laughs> weird... Your, things going on in virginia i'll link it just in case you want to look at it okay. and i'm gonna they, they that do that chat. a lot um and i also am appreciative kind of of women who get i see a lot of this uh where they give their children their maiden name mm -hmm. as either a middle name or a first name so sure. that they can keep the name going which is so yeah. helpful yeah, go yes. ahead and click on that link there, Jennifer, because that's going to take you to the page I was looking at. And it's in the chat here. Oh, it's right. in the chat. It's it's a a screenshot of a newspaper uh, page, and then you want to zoom in to be able to see the area that's highlighted in red. Okay. It should highlight. I see it. Uh, hold on. I was broadening my search, so I ended up looking for Ella Outerbridge just to see if I could find that phrase, and that's what came up. You know, so there's like a Mary Ella. I don't know if that's like the same Ella. Let me see here. I see Alf Mary Ella, daughter of Outer Bridge Horsey of Frederick County, was married to World War II. I was in Washington, D.C. Jensen, composed of the elite. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, oh, that's like a high esteem family. So I, I didn't know if that was related to you or not. Uh, I don't know if there's I right. have no idea, but it's always mm -hmm. worth a look. I... Mm -hmm. The little bit that I found on them is they, you know, I, I found some records in Plymouth and then all of a sudden the, the, the records just 
stopped. I, I couldn't find anything. And I was like, well, where did these people, you know, did they just disappear or, you know, what happened? And the then I started there. doing research and found out that Martin County, which is the adjacent county to Washington County, is about this big. And they had about four fires during the Civil War. So, so many of their records just disappeared. And also because it was a small county, there I guess it just wasn't work. So people left Martin and moved to the bigger city, bigger town. So I was like, oh, I said, they didn't originate in Plymouth. That's why the records start and stop at a certain time because they came from another place. They to, suddenly appeared at that location yeah, in the records. Yeah, yeah so... I have to do, you know, a little bit more research, dig deeper to mm -hmm. find them because they didn't originate there. Now yeah. I got to figure out where they came from. That's great. This this is building a story. This is saying yeah. how they started in one place and going to another place. I mean, both both of you, Linda and Jennifer, both you've done some really amazing detective work already. So thank thank you for <laughs> sharing it with us. Well, I, I think, um, you know, I, it's going to take me some time to learn wiki and all the little wiki tree and all the little things about it. But I, what I think I like about it is it gives me a place to store mm -hmm. the data and the information um, mm -hmm. because um, in reality, most of my family is, doesn't, they don't do this. They're not that interested. They love to hear the stories and everything, but they're not going to be doing this. And I'm like, well, when I drop dead, you're going to throw all my stuff in the trash, aren't you? <laughs> and my you daughter that, no. says, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. You know, but I'm like, yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, digitization nice is very you. important for keeping, you know, records intact and being able to further research after even if you pass away, someone else will pick up the the work from after you pass and i'm gonna move my computer is gonna shut down on me in a minute so i gotta find my plug <laughs> well, i started ancestry many years ago from a great aunt dot in england who sent me pictures of my great 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 grandfather and uh the great grandchildren and the uncles and aunts four went to australia one to new zealand two to america Mm -hmm. and uh told me and hand wrote she was 95 a bunch of family stories that was 35 years ago before ancestry was online and then when uh, i lost and she told me captain silas talbot of the uss constitution was my sixth great grandfather but i didn't know how to track him down and then i that's when i got started doing ancestry was we got online and I could track him further because I had started on paper trees. Yeah. Wait, all and of the us. Stories of our family just is so fascinating. How could mm. you not, you know, when you start writing all the family stories, who you're related to? Yeah. It's, it, it's, the, um, it's uh, is it Linda? Is it, uh, I'm sorry, I can't. Where yes, do Linda. you research? Pardon? Where do you research? I thought I saw some North Carolina there. Oh, all, all of my family are in the Carolinas, Virginia, and uh, Tennessee, Kentucky, all of oh. them. I'm the only one in the West. Okay, well, my I research Virginia and North Carolina also. <laughs> yeah. And I'm from Tennessee originally, but my family is not actually Tennessee. Well, <laughs> recent family is, but not historical family. And Betsy, where do you research? All over? Um, well, my my family, I'm half Taiwanese on my dad's side. And on my mother's side, um, England, Canada, Wales, Scotland. So, um, yeah, that's where I spend my time. That's fun. <laughs> Lots of places. German ancestors. So I'm part of Team Germany. And doing a lot of that research, but I'm now connected into what's called the Great American Bottleneck of early 1700s, 1800s America. And now that's where I found a bunch of uh, notable cousins. So I have one line that's uh, Irish slash English on my paternal side. How do you, I, I see the, con, uh, the information about the DNA. Um, how, 
well, I mean, that might be another class. Um, you know, put your information it's up. It's very helpful. Yeah, yeah. We that, that uh, is a whole other conversation we can have yeah, about that's that. Another. Yeah. <laughs> it is. I I think we I did a DNA segment in um, November. Dece must have been December. The link. Um, and um, we could we could repeat that at at some point. Uh, it's it. I'm certainly not an expert on DNA, um, but I I have loaded my DNA on WikiTree. And is that a beginner know. thing, or is that something you should wait until you're, you're you're? No, no. I mean, I think if you have your what, what's that, Murray? Dan, are you pointing to Stephen? Hmm? Well, I'm, I'm saying I'm I'm saying that's something you should do now. Might as well yeah. get it done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think as long as you, you know, you've tested with um, Ancestry 23andMe, um, my my heritage, uh, family tree DNA, family tree DNA. Yeah, and then um, WikiTree likes you to um, upload it to. Jed. You're not really uploading; Jed. you're connecting yeah. the test. Yeah, Jed Match. Jed Match. Jed right. Match. Yeah, Jed Match, which is free. And then you'll end up with a Jed Match ID number. Okay, I've already and done that. So I have good. Jed Match. And then, uh, well, I think Stephen put the, the help page in the chat. Uh, yeah, this, this is a starting point. I think it branches yeah. off from there. But effectively, the idea is that, yeah, we're not actually linking our, we're not connecting our actual test into WikiTree. We're linking to them through a third party vendor. So oh. you, you get it from, the producer of the DNA test, you know, your FT DNA, your ancestry, and then you, uh, I think you have to copy and paste like the values, the values have to go onto the third party uh, website, like um, GEDmatch. And then from there, once the ID is created, it creates that connection links to the data, and then you port it over to WikiTree you know, by making that connection. And it eventually after about a day, it takes about 24 hours for those things to update. You will then see relationships with other people within your genetic lines and potentially your cousins that would have also uploaded their own test as well. Mm -hmm. And you would see those connections on GEDmatch, right, Stephen? Uh, if they've uploaded to get GEDmatch. Not everybody has done uh, GEDmatch. But like everybody the, who's on WikiTree. There's also mitochondrial DNA as well. So mito yeah. Y DNA might be the other place that they connect to mm -hmm. uh, because my, Mags, uh, you know, runs that site. So, right. you know, she, she has a whole page on that alone. So you can see like on my page, um, DNA connections, uh, there's my I've done um, mito, mitochondrial DNA and autosomal. And there's my GED match number. And you can see I have a second cousin who's also on WikiTree. But that this number, 3.12%, is just the expected percentage of match based on a relationship. Right, the, the estimated yeah. uh, percentage of DNA that you share with Stuart. Is three point one two percent exactly because, because the idea is that fifty percent of your DNA goes to either parent, so your father and mother are fifty percent of you, mm -hmm. and then it goes smaller, twenty five, twelve point five, etc. And eventually, you know, if a very distant uh, cousin in this situation that's still showing up, you know, at three point one two percent. I think after that point, it starts to fall off. Right. Yeah. Right. So, Murray, what, what uh, you had. Uh, Question comment? Yeah, so yeah, if if I may um, spend a couple of minutes because I've, I've got a, yeah. I've got a fair bit of experience with DNA on WikiTree. Yes, please. Um, all right. So so there are several places where you can take DNA tests, and I think Jennifer, you indicated that you've already taken a test. Yes, I I tested on Ancestry, and then Ancestry. I also uh, took advantage of I believe it's Jeez. my heritage that to. to to transfer you to copy, my heritage. You copied it over to my heritage. Yeah. Good. That's a good yeah. move. Uh, the, the, other, the other places you can uh, copy it to are family tree DNA. I think and, I did that too. <laughs> all right. And, and GED match. Okay. I have not done that. Okay. A dead right. match. Now, yes, I do have a dead match profile. Yes. 
Oh, Does good. Gen so, do DNA oh, tests okay. themselves? I, I thought that they just host and the data. You... Sorry, what's, what's that, Steve? Uh, I don't know if GEDmatch itself actually does DNA test. I think they just host the data from the other That's DNA. Right. The, the, you, yeah, I, you, I you have up, a, you I upload up, to them. Uploaded it. Right, yeah. right. Didn't have a number. Yeah. Okay. All right. So have you have you filled in on your profile on WikiTree all of that information? No, I have not. All right. So you have you you can go to your uh, to your profile, and you can go to the Add menu, and you'll see that there's um. Uh, actually, maybe you could show it to us, uh, Betsy. Uh, under the ad menu, there's add DNA information. Um, can I do that even though I've added mine? Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's going to go to yours, not not to anybody else's. Okay. Add DNA test. So I, under the top menu, add DNA yep. test information. Yep. Okay. So now, so this is Betsy's, and she can add more tests. Okay, she can add as many tests as, as she needs to, given given where she is. Okay, mm -hmm. and what what she wants what she wants to indicate is what's the ID of your test at that at those different places. And the reason you're doing this is so that other people who are who are who find you as a match, if they find you on WikiTree, they can say, oh, okay, Jennifer has her test at all these different places. I can go to all those different places and check my matches against her. Okay, that makes it easier. It's a one-stop shopping place where you can come to WikiTree and you can find out all about the person that you you just found a match with. Mm -hmm. Now you can start start exploring that a little bit further. Okay, now that's with autosomal DNA. That's the basic DNA test that we that most of us take, and you're at all the right places. So so you don't need to worry about that. Now there's there's another test that you could take, which is called the mitochondrial DNA, which Betsy took. Mm -hmm. Now the mitochondrial DNA test is one that's available from um, family tree DNA, and and once you've taken a family tree DNA uh, mtDNA test, you can then uh, share that information with two different play, two different sites. One of them is called YFull, and the other one is called Mito Y DNA. And um, WikiTree has a relationship with Mito Y, uh, y DNA. So that if you uploaded your mitochondrial DNA to that to the Mito Y DNA site, it would connect to your WikiTree thing, and people doing research on mitochondrial DNA and trying to do matches with you would be able to find you more easily and would be able to make those connections more readily. Now, one thing I'd like to point out that when you when you're doing this, when 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 all of us are doing these DNA tests, you know we're doing it partly for ourselves. We're doing it partly for our own research. But really what we're doing it for is future generations, because there's only a little bit that we're going to be able to figure out right now. But in future generations, all of the DNA that we're, that we're saving right now is going to make a huge difference in their ability to, to do genetic genealogy. So, so, the, so the right thing to do is to do a, do a DNA test, right? Unless, you've got, unless you're worried about being arrested, then you should do, do a DNA test, okay. is, is my opinion. Um, getting your information in here. So um, there's edit or enter more details she can do on this one test, or right. she can add a test. So let's go to add test. Oh wait, okay. let's. Right. So so first of all, you want to you want to decide what kind of test. Um, so oh, click here to select. Click here to select DNA test. Okay. And so you could pick one of those, right? Ancestry or or whatever. And then it's going to let's let's just go to straight ancestry DNA. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, over to the right. Go down a little bit, Betsy. Mm -hmm. And now, now it wants to, you to fill in some information. Okay. So you don't have a Y DNA portal. You don't have one of those. The first right. one. So don't worry about that one. It wants to know your Ancestry.com username. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that so 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 when you sign in to, onto Ancestry, they assign you a special name. It's not your it's not your full name. It's not Jennifer Halsey. But there's a, there's a name they gave you that's mm -hmm. your ID, okay, and that's what they want here, okay. Then then if you've got if you've got a GED Match D that represents the same kit that you uploaded to GED Match, then you put your GED Match kit ID in here, okay. So now once once that's all done and you, and we and we say add test, which we're not going to do, Betsy. Um, once once that information is filled in and and you you press add test. Then WikiTree is going to be is going to know 
And so is GED match going to know, okay, the person associated with this profile is the same person associated with this GED match kit. And it's the same person associated with this ancestry kit. Okay. So we've got, we've, we've, we've made those connections. Now, when, when you're on GED match and, and people are looking at, at you as a match, they're going to see in the column, it's going to see wiki tree for where your tree is. And they're going to be able to jump directly from GED match right to you in wiki tree. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so, so we want to do that on every test that we can, every test that we do, or like a, a, an ancestry test and, um, and a mitochondrial DNA test. And if you do tests with other companies, then you should add them as separate tests. So for example, you've copied your test to FTDNA and MyHeritage and GEDmatch. So we only need to do this once. We only need to declare your ancestry test and what the GED match number is. We don't need to talk, well, we don't need to talk about the other ones, but we can. Now it's and, and we can and we can do that because we want people to know that we're the same person on these other sites, right? You're the same Jennifer Halsey on Ancestry. You're the same Jennifer Halsey on, on Family Tree. You're the same Jennifer Halsey on My Heritage. Okay. So, so then you would add, uh, scroll back up a little bit more. Oh no, actually, go go to where it says Ancestry DNA and pick another one like Family Tree DNA. Um, so you just do the same for each one. Family, yeah, Family Tree, Family Finder. Go ahead, select that. Now, mm-hmm. th- now it now it wants to know your family tree DNA kit number, so you mm-hmm. put that in. Same deal with my heritage. Okay, so now WikiTree is going to know that these are all the same kits, and importantly, anybody who's coming to look at you and say, "Who is this person I'm matching with?" Jennifer Halsey. Oh, look, she's the same person on Ancestry. She's the same person here and there. I'm going to go check all my matches and make sure she's all in all those matches. And it's a good, strong match. And, and now, now I'm maybe now maybe I can find a third person and we can make a triangle and then we can write a DNA confirmation. Now that's way down the road, Jennifer, writing DNA confirmations is something you won't do for a couple of years, okay? <laughs> but, it, but it, but it's something that you can, you know, you work towards, right? You have your matches, and you figure out who you're connected with, and then you start writing confirmations. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's another. Very project. well said. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. And um, I have to say, just to, to reassure Jennifer, I I did this early on in my wiki tree journey, and it wasn't that hard. I mean, <laughs> if you just sort of go thorough, go slowly through the steps, um, it's not. You can do it. And so yeah. it's it's like a one-time thing. You can add it, and once you've done it, you can you're done. You don't yeah. have to go back and keep nope. dating and whatever. You're well, done. something to be said about that. So um, certain tests have the ability to upgrade. So if you had, I mean, as a man, I have Y DNA that I can use to follow my paternal line, for example. Uh, a lot of the tests are expensive, so you don't get the biggest one initially, but like there's a Y700 if you spend a lot of money to get all of those, you know, pinpoints. Uh, I am think I'm like at a, the, I'm at the mid-range one right now. So in the case of like increasing the detail on those, I think it does allow you to go back in and edit some of that information to add additional points. So like now you said, I've, okay, I've upgraded to the 56 or whatever the number is. That is something that you might want to update over time. But initially, most of the things you're going to start with are going to be at the very bottom. They're going to be the base level stuff. And uh, a lot of cases of the autosomal stuff, you won't have to worry about upgrading that because that's that's going to be you know what you've purchased, what you've already bought, right? Some of the other ones that are a little more advanced, like the YDNA, those would have steps where you would want to make sure that it's as updated as possible on Wikitree. Does that make sense? Now, I manage... Um three other family members uh dna and Mm -hmm. um so i would need to create they're all living so i need to well no i take it back two of them are living so Mm -hmm. three of them three of them are living yeah they should upload their own dna so they should really have their own profiles and do it themselves because you can't really upload someone else's that's what i was going to ask you are them and it's they, like they really, okay, my dad, my aunt, yeah. my great aunt, my I mean my aunt, my dad, 
my mom who's deceased mm -hmm. are the the three main ones and there's no way that my dad or my aunt is going to do anything they're 91 and 92 <laughs> it's not happening <laughs> who is our resident dna expert <laughs> to talk about things like that for uploading for deceased individuals well i don't i i i, I I haven't dealt with deceased individuals, but as far as living people uh, go, do your, um, you, you, I think you said your grandparents, is that right? My mother, and my father and my aunt. Is okay, and, and do they yet have an email address? Have they ever had one? My, my father does, my aunt does not. I do made you know a, I made one for her when I, when I oh, did okay. do her kit and everything, so. Uh, um. All right, now I, I, I think I saw that you have a laptop. So yes. all you need to do, all you need to do is go to where they are and you, you create their profiles for them and then you add their email address. And so uh, you do that while you're there with them, you add their email address, they will get an email and they will be, they will then take over their profile. Now you'll be sitting there with them. So when mm -hmm. they take over the profile, you're going to help, you're going to walk them through the process and save it. and then. You're going to close that up and you're going to help them set their the privacy on their on their profile to the right level so that okay. just just the minimum amount is visible because they're still living and um and and then that'll be done and um and the, and one day when when they pass then their profiles will become um more open and their dna information will be available but until then it, it'll only be available to the people who were on the trusted list so okay. for example you would be on the trusted list i, I would expect um you, you might you might have them add other family members to the trusted list you might ask them to make you the manager of their profile in which case you can then easily add people to the trusted list on their behalf and and when they pass you'll be able to notify wikitree and and provide them the, with, with the information they need for for the uh, you know proper disposal of that of that profile because i know that my my um my auntie has um i tested my dad on 23 and me and i tested her on um ancestry and she's gets hits every day every day and it's really expanded the tree uh my family tree because she's I don't know what it is about her DNA, but I mean, it's every day I'm getting a notice. You got a connection. You got a connection. You got a connection. <laughs> so um, I need to really, and I haven't explored a lot of them. Uh, some of them I have, but, um, uh, and I do want to say that I do, I don't have any qualms about privacy or craziness or whatever about DNA because I was contacted uh, four years ago by a woman who said she was looking for birth parents and that we were showing up as cousins. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, fine, we're whatever. So long story short, ended up finding out that she was given up as uh, given up at birth and she is my second cousin. Mm -hmm. And I had ne never known about her. And uh, we met, found out that we lived 15 minutes apart. And uh, we, you know, stayed in touch and, and met each other. And unfortunately, she passed away three years later from breast cancer. Mm -hmm. but, um, so I, you know, I'm like, this DNA stuff is great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you never know what you'll find. I mean, I didn't realize I was living 15 minutes away from my third cousin. And I ended up uh, meeting her in a parking lot of a pet store <laughs> because I was admiring her car <laughs> because it was covered in Star Wars stickers. That's why And I started talking <laughs> and then she told me her last name was like, wait a minute. I just talked to your brother a month ago. She had the same last name as her brother. So it was like I found my third cousin two times removed in the wild in Milwaukee. <laughs> it was ridiculous. And now we're just like, you know, talking to each other on a regular basis. <laughs> That's the ancestors leading you all together. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. It, it's so funny, especially in this area, you know, because I don't have like direct connections to the Milwaukee area in my lines, but some of the cousins branched off and that's where they moved to. So there's probably more of them floating around here. I just don't even know. 
yeah. Um, I, mean, anyone, um, get, I, I think we're coming up on the two hour mark. Um, yeah, so right. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop our recording um, and then it doesn't mean we have to we have to say good, good night instantly, but let me just stop the recording. Um, I'll say thank you very much to everybody. This has been a, a really fascinating, interesting conversation. We I think we covered a lot. <laughs> so I hope that those of you who are watching later get a lot out of it. And Linda and Jennifer, thank you so much for oh thank you for offering to help. Yeah. Of course. All right. Good night. If I could just make one quick comment. That's yes. It. Yes. I want to right. thank you for that cheat sheet that you put out on the free on the free page, free space oh, page. Good. It was an absolute lifesaver. I've been using it ever since. Oh, good. So, so if you good. add little tidbits to that page, sure. Yeah. Know. And yes, I will. I will keep updating it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you.